How y'all doing, good people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 15 free stocks, Moomoo is gonna give you up to 15 free stocks when you open up your new Moomoo brokerage account. They're gonna give you 15 free stocks or up to 15 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. When you put $100 in your new brokerage account, they're gonna give you five free stocks. When you put $1,000 in your new brokerage account, they're gonna give you 15 free stocks. Now this is a limited time offer, guys. So don't delay, act today. Go down to that description box of this video. Click on that Moomoo link. Open up that Moomoo account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Well, welcome back, guys. Do me a favor. Lock it in with a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button for me. I really, 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 really would appreciate that. Hit the thumbs up button for me if you're rocking with me. And we're going to get into a lot of good stuff today. We're going to talk about the Fed we're going to talk about stocks. And you know I got to give y'all my daily dose of crypto. So we're going to talk about that too. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be in a better position to build wealth for you and your family. Again, like I said, though, lock it in with a thumbs up if you don't mind. That's extremely important to this YouTube channel because, hey, this is the way the algorithm gets us out to more people so we can help more people get to their financial freedom. And if you guys are about helping others get to their financial freedom, you're at the right channel. If you're about you getting to your financial freedom, you're at the right channel. On this channel, we give it to you straight. It's just my opinion, but I'm going to give it to you uncut. Whether you like it or not, that's on you. Whether you decide to take some golden nuggets, that's on you. But my job as an information giver is to give out information based on my 25 years of experience investing and building wealth. So let's dive in. Federal Reserve, their meeting today and tomorrow in front of Congress. And in that meeting, it's widely expected that the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell will tell Congress they're going to keep interest rates higher for longer. Now, why is that so important? Because the market investors want the Fed to decrease short term interest rates, a.k.a. Congress wants the Fed to decrease short term interest rates. Right. But the Fed is going to push back and say, nope, we're not going to do it. We're not going to let you bully us around Congress, even though you provide oversight for us. We're not going to let you tell us what to do. We're going to keep these rates higher for longer because we don't believe inflation has been defeated. That's what the Federal Reserve Chairman is going to tell Congress over these next two days. Now, Congress is going to have its own little mandate. Right. They're going to want the, the Fed chairman to talk about things that they want the Fed chair to talk about. But Jerome Powell is going to stay strong and fast and say, nope, I'm not going to be bullied by y'all, Congress. We're going to keep interest rates higher for longer because we know inflation is not at our two percent target. Which it's not right. Headline inflation is around three percent. Core inflation is around 4%. We're not out of the woods yet. And that's what the Federal Reserve Chairman is going to be telling Congress over these next two days. Now, of course, Congress 
is there to do what? 1%, right? They got their marching orders from the 1%. So Congress is there to really represent the 1%. That's my opinion. You don't have to believe me, but that's my opinion. Who do you think put those people in those Congress seats in the House, in the Senate? How do you think they got elected? By the 1%. I know a lot of y'all think y'all elected them. Oh, I elected them. I voted for X, Y, Z. That's my congressman. That's my, you know, my senator. No, nope. the 1% put them in there. And the 1%'s agenda is to do what? Make money. By any means necessary. Their job is to make money by any means necessary. So Congress is there to do what? Strong arm the Fed for the 1%. Now, a lot of y'all might say, well, Richard, I thought you said the Fed is also controlled by the 1%. They are. They are too. But you got to understand, sometimes the Fed has to draw a line in the sand. Yes, the 1% control everything, guys. He who controls the money controls the power. And he who controls the power controls the world, right? And the 1% do that. Now, Congress is definitely there for the 1%, but the Fed, they have a tight rope they have to walk without a safety net, right? Because they know the American people really are the gasoline that makes this engine run. The Fed knows that. Congress don't really care about that, but the Fed does. The Fed understands, look, we cannot have price stability go out the window. We have to be able to have people afford the basic things they need to live. That's Congress. I mean, that's, that's the Fed. Price stability is their number one concern. So therefore, they're saying, hey, we want to reduce short-term interest rates. We've said we're going to reduce short-term interest rates, but we've got to wait. We got to make sure this inflation thing is down and it's down for the count, for the 10 count. It ain't getting back up. So they're saying, nope, we're not going to reduce short term interest rates in our March 20th meeting. Nope, we're not doing it. Matter of fact, we're not going to even reduce interest rates in our May 1st meeting. Now, that right there, guys, is not good news. For institutional investors. It is not good news for the 1%. That's not good news. So you may see over these next couple of days, you may see the stock market sell off a little bit because I'm telling you, that's what the Fed chair is going to tell Congress. We're going to keep interest rates higher for longer. And if investors, if the market does not believe there's a May 1st rate cut coming, you may see the market sell off today over these next two days. So don't be surprised if you see your stock positions or your ETFs or your index funds in the red over the next couple of days. Now you'll know why. If it goes in the red, you'll know why. Because the Fed chair basically stood up to Congress and said, we ain't going to be reducing no rates anytime soon. We're going to keep them higher for longer because we don't believe inflation is done. We got to get inflation closer to 2% before we're comfortable reducing rates. Now, they're going to reduce rates, but it's just going to be later this year, guys. But th that's not a bad thing for us as long-term investors. It's not a bad thing. The more I can buy my investments at a discount or at a lower price, so when the Fed does start cutting rates and they start going to the moon again, that's where I make my net worth. So it's not a bad thing for you and I as long-term investors if the Fed doesn't cut rates right now, right? You know who want them really to cut rates are the 1% because they're greedy. Now, they already done made a bunch of money in 2023, but they're greedy. It ain't enough for them. They don't care about price stability is what I'm trying to tell you. The 1% don't care about price stability. They don't care if you can afford the basic things you need to live. They just don't care. That's just the truth, guys. They don't care if you can afford 
to put food on your table. They don't care if you can't afford to have a roof over your head. They don't care that you can't afford to put gasoline in your car. They don't care. What they care about is the almighty dollar and, and, and making as much as they can make to lead their lifestyles. That's why you got Congress here. Oh, when are you going to reduce rates? But this is what they're going to do, though. They're not going to come right out and say that. They're going to mask it, right? So they're going to go to the Fed and say, hey, what are you going to do about this banking issues that we're having here in our country with all these, these regional and small banks and these community banks failing? What are you going to do about that? Right? Really what they're asking the Fed is, is we, we don't want y'all to put no more restrictions on banks. We don't want you to put any, any, any restrictions. We want them to be able to go out and do whatever they want to do with their depositors' money. And guess who depositors are? You and me. They want to be able to give banks the ability to go out and do anything they want to do with our money. Without any fiduciary. Eh, I guess they do have some fiduciary responsibility, but not really. When you go into the bank and you put your money in your bank account, guess what? That bank can take that money that you just put in that bank account and do whatever they want to do with it. The only thing that protects you is something called FDIC insurance that most banks have to be a part of, right? Most federally chartered banks have to be a part of FDIC. That's the only thing that saves you. If it wasn't for FDIC, they would take your money when you de deposit it and <laughs> trust me, man, you'd be out of luck. Think about what happened in the 1920s, specifically the Great Depression. Yeah, a lot of people put their money in banks and never got it back. That's when they came up with this FDIC insurance thing. So that's the only protection you have when you put your money in the bank. But the bank can take your money and do whatever they want to do with it to make money. See, the bank don't have no money of their own. They got your money. Your money is what they use to make money. Right. But the only thing saves you is FDIC insurance. So the Fed, honestly, honestly, the Fed is is that buffer. Right. But Congress is basically not wanting more regulations on banks. Why? Because banks are a big contributor to these folks getting put in office. The banking lobby. The banking lobby is a big contrib contributor in Washington, D.C., guys. They carry a big stick. The banking lobby. They pay a bunch of money every year to make sure their back is protected in Washington, D.C. from these lawmakers. Just telling you. The second thing they're going to be talking about in there, obviously, is prices. And we just talked a little bit about that. They're going to be talking about, well, when are prices coming down? Really, they're not asking about when are prices coming down for you and I. Really, what they're asking is, is when are you going to reduce interest rates? But they're not going to come out and say it that way. They're going to come out and say, when are you going to reduce prices? When are prices coming down? But they're really saying behind closed doors, when are you going to reduce interest rates? Really, Congress don't care about prices. The 1% don't care about prices. Why are they rich? They're wealthy. They can pay for whatever they want to. They don't worry about the price. They can go in somewhere and just have personal enjoyment and don't worry about price because they got assets. They're wealthy. The only people worry about prices are the 99 percenters. You and I are the ones that worry about prices. These wealthy people, these one percenters don't worry about price. These people in Congress, they don't worry about price. Only you and I worry about price. So really what they're saying on the banking thing is they're going to say, well, we need, what are you doing to regulate these banking banks? What they're really saying is we don't want you to regulate the banks anymore. You're hurting the banking industry. They, they, you're putting too many handcuffs on them. Take the handcuffs off the banking industry so they can be free to go out and take depositors' money and do whatever they want to do with it. That's what they're really saying. They're not going to say that in the public, but that's what they're saying behind closed doors. We don't want no more handcuffs on the banking industry. Take the handcuffs off. We want to allow these people to take money from depositors and do whatever they want to do with it to make money even if they lose the money from the depositors. Think about it. Think about 2022 when those banks failed. Silicon National Bank, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, I think that's the name of it, Signature Bank. And then last year, First Republic Bank. What do you think happened? They took depositors' money and did what with it? 
put it in shady investments or shady lending that didn't pan out. Then guess what? Customers come in, give me my deposits. They don't have them. They don't have them. So what has to happen? FDIC has to come in, shut the bank down, dismantle the bank, sell it off the comp sell it off the banks like J.P. Morgan Chase, and then the federal government does what? Okay, J.P. Morgan Chase, we're going to give you this one billion in loans. Now, if it doesn't perform well, we'll eat the loss. Not you, J.P. Morgan. That's what the government does with these big banks. Think about it. Think about the great financial crisis in 2008 when, if some of you guys may remember this bank, it was called what? Wachovia Bank. Remember Wachovia Bank back in 2008, 2007? It was one of the four largest banks in America. Guess what happened to it? It went out of business, basically. Now, technically it didn't go out of business because Wells Fargo, another too big to fail bank, stepped in and bought the whole bank, bought all the shares, everything, got everything, took the whole bank. But guess what? The government stepped in and said, okay, Wells Fargo, you take all this. We don't want you to piecemeal it. We want you to take the whole bank, deposits, loans, etc. But we'll backstop you on the bad loans. So all of Wachovia's bad loans, if they continue to be bad loans, we will backstop you and make you whole. And that's what they did. Wachovia turned in, Wachovia got bought by Wells Fargo. Now, they had no other choice but to put handcuffs on the banking industry at that point because the banking industry was just, it was out of control. Really, you had two or three really, really tier one banks that could have failed. So they started doing this. They said, okay, we're going to put some handcuffs on your banking industry. And they did that for many years. Remember the Dodd-Frank regulations? That's what started the Dodd-Frank regulations on banks, on financial institutions. Because see, back then, 2006, 2007, 2008, it was the wild, wild west in the banking industry. They were doing all kind of crazy stuff and taking your deposits and doing it. All kind of stuff. So they put handcuffs on them for a little while. Now they want the handcuffs back off. They've been lobbying, the banking industry has been lobbying all of these years to get the handcuffs off. Now, no one's going to come and tell you that publicly, guys, but I'm telling you that's what they're doing. They're trying to get the handcuffs off. Why? So that they can take your deposits and do all kind of risky investments. That's what they did in 2008, 2007, 2006, 2005. That's why you see... So many people lost so much money, whether it had been in real estate, the stock market, etc., because it was the wild, wild west. We're getting ready to try to go back to those times. So be careful where you park your money with these banks. I've already told you guys my recommendation, always have you more than one bank. Always. Never keep all your money in one bank. These banks do not care about you. They use your money to increase their wealth for their high-priced executives and their shareholders. They care nothing about you. Do not be loyal to any of these banks because they're not loyal to you. Just giving it to you straight. So that's one of the things they're going to be talking about in this, in, this, in this meeting for the next two days with Congress. And then again, they're going to be talking about, you know, interest rates. Now, they're going to call it price cuts. When, when, when are we going to see prices come down on, on bread and, and milk and, and blah, 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 blah? That's what they're going to say in the public. But behind closed doors, they're really saying, when are you going to decrease short-term interest rates because the 1% ready to get rich again or, or, or increase more of their wealth? When are you going to reduce these rates? Because we know if they reduce rates, what does that really do for the 1% when they reduce rates? How does the 1% really benefit from that? Well, I'm going to tell you how they benefit. 
See, when they start reducing these rates, that's going to introduce a new money supply to our financial system. It's going to reduce a new money supply. And that money supply is borrowing money cheap. See, that's money supply. When you, when you, when you reduce interest rates, guys, you introduce a new supply of money to our financial system or, and to our economy. See, when the Fed increases short-term interest rates, they do what? They turn off the money supply. When the Fed decreases the short-term interest rates, they turn back on the money supply. Congress is telling them to turn back on the money supply. That's basically what they're telling them. Reduce interest rates, turn on the money supply. Who are they turning on the money supply for, really? You and I. They're turning the money supply on for the 99% because they want us to go borrow this money and do what with it? Buy things that the 1% own or sell it through their companies. That's what they want us to do. See, right now, Americans are, are between a rock and a hard place. The 99%ers like us, we're between a rock and a hard place. Because we have no personal savings, because we spend it all. Over the last two years, we spent all our personal savings. But we also have no access to money, borrow money, because rates are too high. Think about it. No personal savings, rates are too high. What only source of money most of us have right now? Our wages from our job. That's the only income source. And what's happening, though, are Americans are starting to say, uh, I ain't got enough money. Remember a couple days ago, I, I, I walked you guys through that Wells Fargo money study where people are saying 56 percent of people are saying, no, I'm not happy with the state of our economy. No, I'm talking about 50 percent, 56 percent of people saying, no, I'm not happy with the economy. Why aren't they happy with the economy? Because they can't go out and buy extras. They can't go splurge. They can't go buy some things that they really don't. They can't buy that because why? They got no personal savings and they can't go get loans to do it. They only got their, pers they only got their income and their income is already not enough to take care of their everyday needs. They're living on more than what they make. So what does reducing interest rates do for people like you and I? It gives us another source of money that we can go get and take and buy things. And who does that, who does that benefit when we buy things? 1%. See, the 99%, we don't own no companies. Yeah, we may own some small mom and pop on the corner type companies. But I'm talking about your big companies that really control everything, all the goods and services. We don't own any of them. The only way we get to be owners in those companies is if we buy stock in that company and become a small little owner. But even buying stock in that company doesn't give us any power because we don't own enough stock. See, the shareholders at home own all the stock or, or you know, 5%, 10% of the stock. Those are the ones that have something to say at the proxy meetings. You and I don't have nothing to say. Ain't nobody going to listen to us because we don't own enough stock. That's how it works. So really, the people that want us to have access to cheap money are the one percent so that we can go then start borrowing more money like we normally do. When money is cheap, we'll go out and borrow it and then we'll take that borrowed money and buy stuff, whether it be a house, whether it be a car. Right. Whether it be whatever. But see, right now, we don't have access to that cheap money because interest rates are too high. So guess what? Congress wants them to bring interest rates down and turn back on the money supply because it benefits the 1%. I keep telling you this whole thing, guys, in, in, in our economy, in our financial system, in our financial markets, it all goes back to who? The 1%. It just does. So these two days that the Fed is going to be spending time with Congress, it's going to be important. Watch the stock market these next two days and what it does. It'll tell you a lot about whether investors like what's happening or if investors don't like what's happening. Right. If the Fed doesn't get in there and, and give clear, precise guidance on when they're going to reduce rates, I think you'll see the market bounce. I mean, I think you'll see the market sell off a little bit. Not not a massive sell off, but just to just to let people know. Investors are not happy with 
the, what the Fed chair said. Now, remember, the Fed is going to have their own meeting on March 20th, just to, you know, a couple weeks. They're going to have their own meeting on March 20th. Right. So so this meeting they're having right now is not their meeting, not the FOMC. I think it's the FOMC meeting. That's not the one right now. That's just a, 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 a Congress is called the Fed chair in. And remember, guys, a lot of people, oh, the Fed, ain't, the, the Federal Reserve ain't controlled by the government. It's not part of the government. That's bull crap. It has oversight by Congress. Why do you think they're in there talking to Congress today? Because Congress has oversight. They just not know, oh, they just do whatever they want to do. No, the Federal Reserve has oversight by Congress. That's the reason you got the Fed chair in there talking to him today. But the real Fed meeting is going to be on March 20th, right? That's going to be the real Fed meeting. And in that Fed meeting, the chairman is going to say the same thing he's saying today in the, the congressional meeting. I'm going to say the same thing. We're going to keep rates higher for longer because we're not satisfied that inflation has been defeated. When we feel confident that inflation is not going to go back up again anytime soon, that's when we'll start reducing rates. For you and I, that's okay. Why? Because we know we can get these companies and these ETFs at a discount. I picked up some SPLG and FTEC yesterday. Picked up more of it yesterday. I'm just telling you guys, Here's the opportunity to build wealth. There's, it, it hadn't exploded yet. It ain't exploded yet. It's coming though. But I got to position myself where my behaviors are right. So I'm starting to buy this stuff every, I'm in the market every day. I'm starting to buy even more guys. I'm doing my normal dollar cost averaging on a monthly basis, but I'm buying more. I'm buying more because it's still discounted in my opinion. We haven't seen the real rally yet. The end of 2023 was just a small part of it. We haven't seen this rally yet. I think we're going to have a 10-year rally. It's going to be 10 years worth of gains in my opinion, right? That's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with that, but that's my opinion. So that's where we sit right now with the Fed. The Fed right now is not prepared to reduce short-term interest rates, guys. But that's a good thing for you and I. Why? Because we are long-term wealth builders. We're long-term wealth builders. That just tells me I got another several months to gobble up as much as I can before the real thing hits. Once they start reducing those rates, I think, I think that's when we go. So I, got, I, still, got, I still got March. I still got April. I still got May. I think in June, that's when the Fed will start reducing. They'll start reducing short-term interest rates in June. So be prepared for it. So what does that mean in June if they start reducing? I keep buying. I keep buying. Remember, I got a 10-year window. My goal is the S&P 500 be, you know, 10,000 points in 10 years. Right now it's 5,000. I want it to be 10,000. I think it'll be 10,000. So I just keep buying. I keep buying. If I can double, if, 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 if the S&P doubled itself in the last 10 years, which it did, it more than doubled. It went from 2,000 points to 5,000 points in the last 10 years. Go do the research. From 2014 to 2024, it more than doubled itself. So guess what? I believe over the next 10 years, it will more than double itself. That's what I believe. That's what I, I'm going to hang my hat on and I'm going to keep investing every single month waiting on that payday, waiting on that double my net worth payday. And I think it's coming. So that's where we're all with the feds. I wanted to give you all that before we dived into the rest of this so that you could understand what's happening with the fed. Why are they meeting with Congress? That's why they're meeting. Congress provides oversight. Congress wants to know some answers publicly and they want to know some answers privately. You and I won't get access to the private answers or, or the private questions that they ask the Fed, but I already know what they are. No more regulations on the banks and we want you to reduce interest rates. That's really behind closed doors. That's what this whole meeting is about. But publicly, what you and I can see 
It's going to be, tell us what's going on in the banking industry and then tell us when you're going to lower prices, when prices are going to come down. That's what we're going to hear. But behind closed doors, it's much different. Remember, guys, they don't want us to know anything about how this country really runs. They don't want us to know how money is really made in this country. They want us in the matrix. They want to keep us in the matrix, earning and spending. That's it. Earning income and spending that income. They want us in the matrix. They don't want us over here as investors where we're doing what? Buying assets and creating what? Wealth. They don't want us over here. They want us over here. So they're never going to let us in on everything. And, and, and the reason they don't let us, they, they say they don't let us in, is, well, we don't want to scare you. You can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. Remember that Tom Cruise movie with, with uh, Jack Nicholson? And Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise was hammering him. Tom Cruise was the lawyer. He was hammering him. And, and Jack Nicholson was like, you can't handle the truth. That's how they feel about us as a public. They don't believe we can handle the truth. They don't believe we can handle it. So what do they do? They hold back. They redact. They don't tell us the full truth. That ain't because they don't think we can handle the truth. They do that because so they can manipulate us. That's it. A few good men. That's it. That's it. Somebody in the chat just gave it to me. Few good men. Tom Cruise was hammering him. Hammering him. Jack Nicholson was like, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies ever. So my point is this. They want to keep you in the matrix, right? They don't want you to become investors. So understand when you start reading or listening to people talk about this two-day Fed meeting that they had with Congress, remember what we talked about here, what the real truth is. They're not going to give you the real truth in the mainstream media. They're not. They're not going to give you the truth in the mainstream media. They have no incentive to. The mainstream media is owned by the 1%. The 1% does not want you to know anything about the truth. They want to, the only, only truth they want you to know is what they tell you to keep you in the matrix. That's it. Understand what we just talked about, in my opinion, is the real truth. Take regulations off the big banks so that they can take your deposits and do whatever they want to do with them to make money. Bingo. And then the next thing is, is when are you going to reduce interest rates so that the 99% the, the can start borrowing money again and get deeper and deeper into debt. And then they take that money and they spend it on things they don't need. They spend it on things that they think are assets, but they're really liabilities, right? That's really what they, why they want interest rates to come down. Not so that, oh, your prices of your milk can come down and your prices of your eggs can come down. That's bull crap. They don't care anything about your milk or your egg prices. They don't care. Do you think anybody in the 1% know what milk costs? Do you think any 1%er knows what eggs cost? No. Somebody buying that for them. They don't do any of that. Do you think they really know how a normal person lives every day, paycheck to paycheck? Do you think they really know how you live? They don't. Nor do they care. They don't. Just being honest with you. I'm just keeping it a buck. I'm keeping it 100 with you. Whether you believe it or not, it's my opinion. If you don't believe me, then go out and do your own research and come up with your own opinion. But I'm just giving you my opinion. Let's move on to stocks. We've talked about the Fed. So we've, we've set the stage for what's happening over these next two days with the Fed. We've set the stage what's happening on March 20th with the Fed, which is nothing. It's going to be a repeat on March 20th of what they say today. That's all it's going to be, guys. It's going to be identical repeat. We're going to keep rates higher for longer. We're not confident that we beat inflation. That's all the Fed going to say today, these next two days. And that's all they're going to say on March 20th. So no, no, no new news. The kicker is what forward advice or forward thinking will they have or forward guidance for May 1st? That's the real kicker. See, most investors, most economists have already written off them reducing rates on March 20th. They've already written that off. They know that's not. 20th, March 20th is nothing but the same from today's meeting, two-day meeting, right? We know that. What we got to figure out, though, is May 1st. Are they going to reduce May 1st? That's, that's the kicker, right? That, that, that's important. 
I personally don't believe they reduce May 1st. I think they reduce in June. That's going to be an important decision by them, though, because now you're talking about half of the year is gone. Don't get me wrong. The market is still done well. And why has the market done well up until this point? Anticipation. See, the market has been anticipating rates coming down. Why do you think crypto taking off? Why do you think stocks taking off? The market is anticipating the Fed bringing down rates March or May. Problem is, that may not happen. So be prepared. Don't, don't be shocked if you see stocks tumble a little bit. Don't be shocked. Don't be like, oh my God, what's happening? Oh, I knew it. I should have never put my money in the stock. Don't be shocked, guys. The market is basically having a little baby rally right now because of anticipation and AI, those two things. Anticipation of the Fed reducing rates and what's going on in the AI revolution with companies like NVIDIA, so on and so forth. That's what's really fueling this stock market run is technology, right? Technology sector and the anticipation that rates are coming down. Those two things together is what's really fueling it. So don't be shocked in May, sometime in May, if this thing falls off a little bit. Don't be shocked. All that's telling you is the market is unhappy with the expectation from the Fed. They're just unhappy with it. That doesn't mean we're going back to 2022. I don't believe that's going to happen. I'm just saying, be prepared for that if you see it tail off in the month of May or in the month of April, right? Just, just, just be careful not to allow that to derail you or get you off of your wealth building plan, your wealth transfer blueprint. Right. So let's move on and talk a little bit about stocks. Here's the thing. I want to read y'all something, guys. So 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 hang in there with me. I just want to read y'all an email real quick that one of my subscribers sent me I, because this is will paint the picture for us and, and why I'm talking about um, what's going on with stocks. Right. Uh, just 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 and, and why we shouldn't try and be an expert. And, and, and lean on passive investments to be our expert. Let's not try to be active investors. Let's be passive investors. And, and, and this will make the case. And again, I'm not going to mention the person's name, but I'm going to read the email that the person sent me. And, and then we're going to talk about this. So bear with me. Give me give me two minutes to get through this. Good evening, Mr. Fain. I hope you are doing well. I found you on YouTube long time ago, and I actually started a Weeble account based off of what I learned from you. But now I have a Robinhood account where I deposit $50 a week because I've never, never been good at saving. Therefore, I want to speak with you before making the next move. I am a professional organizer by trade, and I do frequent the container store to buy products for my clients. I'm realizing right now that their stock is down to $1.22 per share. And I want to throw $1,000 in there and buy up to that amount. But I'm a little hesitant because I don't know very much about the stock market and only what I've learned from you and a couple of your YouTubers and a couple of other YouTubers I listen to. I think that I'm going to buy some stock this Friday. I just need to know or would like to know your opinion on whether or not I should buy the container store. I don't really know how to study the history of the stock, basically the history of the container store and its stock. I know that I can go back through and look at it, and I know that it's gone up and down over the years, but I just need a little more information. I do have an S&P 500 stock. I have VOO stock and a few others, but I think I'd rather pay for a consultation to speak with you 
to get your opinion before I make my move. I also noticed that I have roughly $5,000 in my brokerage account, but it doesn't seem like it's growing, but I don't know how to trade stock. So I'm saying all of this to say, I'd love a consultation with you so that I can pick your brain a little to make a more informed decision as far as my next move is concerned. All right, so let, let's, let's dive into this because this is, this is something that I talk to you guys about quite a bit. I talk to you guys about not trying to be the expert. See guys, when you're trying to become a stock picker, you're the expert. You're on the hook for all of this. You got to pick winners and losers. So this particular person here is trying to be a stock picker. The problem is, guys, I'm not a stock picker. There's no sense of spending your money doing a consultation with me because I don't know how to pick stocks. I, I don't know how to evaluate the container store company's stock to tell you if it's going to go up or down. I, I, I don't know how to do that. And most people don't. That's why most retail investors, matter of fact, most institutional investors don't do well at picking individual stocks for that reason. Now, let's just take a look at the container store. The container store, and this is all information just right there online, right? The container store went, they had an IPO, their public initial offering in 2013. They got out the gate at $18 a share, 2013. It quickly ran up to around $46 a share. So over the last 11 years, it's went from $46 a share to $1.22 a share. Now, I'm no rocket scientist, didn't really do that well in math, but if, they're all, but if they were at $46 a share and they're down to $1.22 a share, I don't know. What would you do? I probably wouldn't be buying a container store. Not me. I mean, come on now. So all I'm saying is, is that this is the kind of stuff we get hung up on trying to be stock pickers. I don't care how many books you read. I don't care how many seminars you listen to. I don't care how many YouTubers you listen to. I don't care how many Discord chats you're in. I don't care how many charts you read. You will never be prepared to understand this company. You just won't. Clearly, they don't even understand their company. Their stock went from $46 a share 11 years ago to $1.22. Now, if you don't understand your company, how in the world am I going to understand it good enough to invest in it? When you don't even clearly understand it, it's your company. You go from $46 a share down to, and, uh, down to $1.22 a share. And my lovely subscriber, I know she's trying to just do her best to build wealth. That's not the way to do it, guys. It's not the way to do it. See, that's active investor. You are on the hook. You have to pick winners and losers. To me, I don't want to be in that situation. Now, she mentioned something that I thought was pretty interesting. She says, I do have an S&P 500 stock, VOO. See what I'm saying? You got the right vehicle right there. All you got to do is discipline yourself, stay consistent, and be patient. But see, we don't want to do that. We're looking for a home run. Oh, shoot, I know it was $46 a share, but God doggone it, it's down to $1.22. What if it'll go back to $46 a share? It's not. It's not. It's not. It has a better chance of going to zero than it does going to $46 a share. Now, I'm no stock picker. I don't know much about this company. I do know they did about $90 billion in revenue, but, but where they are in their space, I, I have no idea. I don't buy anything for the container store, and I certainly wouldn't buy their stock at $1.22 a share. 
Now, some people might say, you know something, Richard, that's a bargain. I think it'll go to $4 a share. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But unless you got a gazillion dollars and you're willing to take that bet, you ain't gonna make no money anyways. Her putting a little thousand dollars in there at a dollar 22 cents, it, it gotta really, 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 really do something magical in order for her to make any money. I'd rather take my thousand dollars and put it in S&P 500 and ride that train. Something that did 23% return last year. Something that's did over uh, uh, 10 to 12% return over the last 10 years. See where I'm going with this? But no, we want to take our money and put it in a company that's pretty much close to bankruptcy. We want to put it in a company that's pretty much close to bankruptcy. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. See, this is what happens to us when we try to be stock pickers. When we try to learn too much and know too much. Only thing you need to know is historical return, passive investment, something that I don't have to be the expert, S&P 500 ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index. Bingo. For 99% of us, that's the only investment we ever need. But see, the problem with that is it requires discipline, it requires consistency, and it requires patience. We don't have any of that, most of us. Why? Because we've been, we've been trained and programmed since birth not to have any of those things. See, we've been taught this. We've been taught, you don't need no patience. You need it now. You deserve it right now. I'm going to invest in this $1.22 cent stock, and who knows? It might go to $20. That's not going to happen, guys. Like, the stock is $1.22 cents from $46. Basically 10 years ago. How in the, I mean, come on, guys. Again, but, but, but see, we take our, we take our, 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 our normal, rational stuff and we take that out of the filter system and we put in all of this impulsive, irrational, got to hit a home run, can't, ain't got 10 years to wait. See, that's how we think. We take all the rational thinking and rational thinking would be, this thing then went from $46 a share down to $1.22. See, rational thinking would be, that's probably not a good investment. Maybe I should just find something else that has have a better historical track record. That's why I keep telling y'all, history. Had you just went into Google and do a quick little history search, you could have found everything you needed to know about this company. Stock price 46, now it's down to $1.22. Probably management is in disarray, probably not number one in the industry that they're in. I don't know. I don't know. My, my, my problem with it is you got to be the expert. And none of us are going to outperform the S&P guys. Not over a 10 year block of time. We're not. None of us. None of us will outperform. So why in the heck would I buy this stock? I wouldn't. So, 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 so my simple response to her um, was, hey there, my strategy is not to become a stock picker. I rather invest in ETFs and let the ETF be the expert. I can't advise on the container store. I know nothing about their business model. Doesn't seem like a very good business model with a $1.22 stock price. That, that was my response to her. And, and, and I, didn't, I didn't say that to be mean or cruel. I, I just said that because that's how I truly feel. I think sometimes we, 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 we get caught up in this. Now, she's doing the right thing because she got the S&P 500, VOO. She's doing the right thing, but ain't got no patience. That's my opinion now. I'm not saying she don't, but I'm giving you my opinion based on what I've read. No patience. Because, see, I take that $1,000 every single month. Check this out. She take that thousand dollars she's getting ready to put into this whatever this little stock is she's getting ready to buy. She take that thousand dollars every single month for the next ten years and put it in VOO, get an eight percent return. She got a quarter of a million dollars, man. But see, we don't got patience for that. That we don't have patience for that. See, the problem is we don't see nothing going up fast enough because we got no patience. Our patience is probably as big as a gnat. That's how big our patience is. You can barely see a gnat. That's how big most of our patience is. We got no patience. Because 
Studies have already told you if you just put $1,000 in the S&P and you do that over the next 10 years, you're going to have a quarter of a million dollars in there. That's wealth, guys. But see, we ain't got no patience for that. We'd rather chase after companies that are basically going to zero, that probably won't even be in existence in a couple of years, probably may be taken over by somebody, dismantled, sold off, who knows. But at $1.22 per share, that's not a great, for me it wouldn't be. My bet would be on, like she mentioned, get yourself in an S&P 500 ETF. Look at the track record. That's all I'm saying. That's all I really wanted to say about stocks today. You have to have a wealth transfer blueprint, guys, over these next 10 years. If you want to build wealth, it's not hitting home runs. You, you can't be trying to be a home run hitter in, in, in this wealth game. Or, or, or you're, not, you're going to strike out a lot. Don't try to be a home run hitter. Just hit a single, a double, an occasional triple. That's all. Just hit, that's all I did over 25 years. I just hit, kept hitting singles. Kept hitting a, a double occasionally. Maybe every now and then I might hit a triple. Never hit any home runs. Ever. Now, I'm not saying people don't hit home runs, but I never hit none. And most of us, I would venture to say, won't hit any. The majority of the people that build wealth, build wealth through what? Hitting singles, hitting doubles, and the occasional triple. And they just do that over and over and over, year after year after year, decade after decade after decade, and they build wealth. I had a conversation with a gentleman yesterday in one of my one-on-ones. I'm not going to mention no names either, but I was so impressed by this brother. Impressed. 30 years in law enforcement, retired, nice pension coming in, and better yet, I mean, seven figure, multi millionaire. Multi millionaire. So for y'all around here talking about, oh, I can't build wealth with this. Listen, man, this guy wasn't no highly compensated five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year guy. He just did what? Got that right, made his money, invested it, and now he's sitting on multi million dollar net worth. And guess what he was doing? He wanted to double it. He wanted to double it. So, guess what he and I had talked about? This is how I believe you can double it. Do this. And guess what I told him? Exactly what I just told her. And y'all, all you got to do, brother, is put it right here, in my opinion. Get you, get you, break that thing down in some ETFs that do this. S&P 500 leads the pack. I said, listen, man, if you get an 8% return on this money you got in your net worth right now, you more than double it in 12 years. Because his thing was, when I get to 65, I'm at my golden years. I, he already retired, but he don't want to stop doing something. He want to build him some side hustles. He want to get him something going just to keep him busy because, you know, he's 53. So who wants to just sit around at home doing nothing? So he wants to build him, some, build him a second business or side hustles. But at 65, that's, that's where he's at. That's his end date. But he wants to double that net worth. And exactly what I told y'all, I told him, <laughs> you ain't got to recreate the wheel. I'm telling you right here, this is where you put it at. This is where you put it at. You get an 8% return over the next 12 years, you're going to double your net worth. Bingo. Over the next 12 years. So I, 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 I'm, I'm consistent with my message, guys. I don't care if you already got wealth and, and you're trying to build more wealth or you got no wealth, just trying to build wealth. I'm going to tell you the same thing. Don't try to be the expert. You're not going to win. Not long term. Don't try to be the expert. Go get your passive investments who already have a proven track record of being a very good expert. That's why the S&P is so powerful. I also read another article where it was saying that ETFs and index funds are taking over the investment game when it comes to paper assets. Why? You can't beat them. 
See, instead of out here trying to be a stock picker where you got to know everything, you concentrate on one or two stocks. This ETF got 500 of the biggest stocks in America in it. Every industry, every sector. <laughs> Listen, man, you, you, you can't beat that. You can't outperform this on a 10-year block. You can't. So all I'm telling you is stop trying to be individual stock pickers. Get yourself into something that's a passive investment. I've already told you what my big three are. SPLG is my S&P 500. FTEC is my information technology. I already told y'all what the tech sector is getting ready to do, man. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet, man, in this tech sector. You ain't seen it yet. It's coming. It's coming. You have not seen it yet in the tech sector. It's going to explode. Over these next 10 years, guys, the AI that's getting ready to be, be produced and discovered is going to be mind-boggling. Mind boggling. Well, Richard, what are you talking about? Don't be the expert. You you got the, the magnificent seven. You picking individual stocks. Well, you guys got to understand, guys. 80% of my money goes into passive investments like ETFs. 80% of the money that I invest. I just told y'all earlier in the stream that I just put more money in SPLG and FTEC. Did you hear me say anything about the magnificent seven? No, because most of my money goes into those two things. And has been that way for years, whether it be VOO and VGT, which, which I've done for years through Vanguard, or if it's these new ones that I decided to go with. I still got a bunch of money in VOO. I just decided to redirect my present dollars and my future dollars to go in SPLG and FTEC. They just give me a better opportunity to really double my net worth. But 80% of my money goes into passive investments, guys, with low expense ratios, but carry a big return, big punch. That's where my money goes, 80% of it. Now, 20% of my money, yes, I do put in individual stocks. But you guys got to understand, it's not just no regular individual. It ain't no container store. I'm talking about the Magnificent Seven here, man. Right? I'm talking about Apple. I'm talking about Microsoft. Meta. Amazon, Alphabet, NVIDIA, Tesla. Now, right now, you got Tesla and Apple that are heavily on sale, in my opinion, especially Tesla. I don't know. For me, that's not the container store. I don't know. They're just a little different. A little bit different. So that's not me going out on a limb. <laughs> You're talking about the Magnificent Seven. These are the top seven companies in the S&P 500, man. They represent 28% of the value of the S&P 500. These seven companies. That's not going out on a limb, guys. That's, 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 that's easy work. That's the no-brainer. That's just not even easy. That, that's just past easy. I don't have to research Amazon. I ain't got to research Tesla? I don't have to research NVIDIA. I don't have to research any of those companies. That's plug and play. Plug and play. I just believe those seven individual stocks will be worth more tomorrow than they are today. And my job is to just put 20% of my money in it and do it. Worst case scenario, I got 80% over here that's going to get an 8 to 10% return over the next 10 years. 80% of it is going to get an 8 to 10% return. So even if I strike out on the Magnificent Seven, which I won't, but if I do, I still got 80% over here that's doubling itself. See, it's not me putting 80% of my money in the Magnificent Seven and 20 into ETFs. No, it's the opposite. That's all I'm saying. If you, you better come up with a strategy and a game plan to get you from point A to point B. But have some patience as you go on that journey. That's all I'm saying. Stop being, oh, uh, 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 I'm panic buying because everybody else said I should buy. I'm, I'm panic buying. I don't know why I'm buying. I don't know what I'm buying. I'm just buying because everybody else said you should be buying. That's what most of us do, right? We either panic buy or we panic sell. And, and all that's driven by what we hear on TV, what we hear on social media, what we hear on talk radio, what we hear on podcasts, what we hear from YouTubers. 
all of that panic buying and panic selling, all is fueled by what we allow into our filter system. Because in this channel, I've always told you guys, the slow and steady wins the race. But in, the, but in, but in this world, in the matrix, it's the fast. Whoever gets to the fastest, cut corners, take shortcuts, pay somebody to give you the information, pay somebody to invest for you. Now, this gentleman I spoke with yesterday, and then we're going to move on. He also had you know, a good part of his money invested with the financial advisor, um, which I don't have a problem with. And he knows that. I don't have a problem with you having your money with a financial advisor. It's your money. You do whatever you want to do. But you he and I had a real good conversation. I said, well, tell me what your, your return was on your portfolio in 23. And it was 7%. Now, in all fairness, he had a 60-40 split. So 60% of his money might have been in something growth. I don't know what it was in because we didn't, we didn't talk about that. I just know he mentioned he had a 60-40 split. So I'm assuming maybe 60% was in, in growth and maybe 40% was in, you know, income. I don't know. But he said he had a 7% overall growth in 2023. I said, you do understand the S&P did 20%. See, that's what I'm telling you guys. It's hard to, it's hard to outperform the S&P, even under your managed, even under your managed portfolio. See, even in the managed portfolio, it's hard to outperform the S&P. See, because in that managed portfolio, a lot of times they're moving stuff around depending upon how you pay them. Now, some people pay them a flat fee. Some people pay them per transaction. I don't know. I didn't get into all of that. But all I'm saying is S&P based on what he told me, outperformed his money manager. I'm just saying. And again, I think he is in a perfect position to do wonderful things and he will do wonderful things. He's just a smart guy and he's done well with his money. But even that, when you look at S&P managed money, again, it probably isn't apples to apples because I probably a good portion of that is an in income and that's okay. But still, I'm just saying, obviously, he has growth on his mind because he's trying to double the net worth in the next 12 years. So he has growth on his mind. But I understand when you got that type of wealth already, you do have to protect it a little bit closer than someone who is just starting out with no wealth and they can go balls to the wall and do 100 percent equities. I get that. But my point is, even with managed money, sometimes, most times it don't outperform it don't outperform passive S&P ETFs. It just doesn't. So you pick how you want to go down that path, but, but get, get a path. Go down a path. Get yourself somewhere where you, you're creating wealth for yourself. These next 10 years are going to be some of the greatest 10 years in the history that we know of in investments to build wealth. The question is, is are you going to participate? Let's move on to crypto. My daily dose of crypto, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. So I'm still hearing everywhere how well crypto is doing. Oh, goodness gracious, it hit its all-time high, and it's continuing to soar. <laughs> Y'all already know that's a rug pull, right? Y'all know how I feel about that. It's a straight rug pull. So here's what's going to happen for, 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 for you guys. Now, if you were smart and you bought in 22... You got a great opportunity to dump this crap and make your profit and move on to a, a real investment that has some some legs to it. That's my opinion. You don't have to do that, but I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm certainly planning on doing that with my little Shiba Eno and my little Doge. I'm going to dump it at some point doing this little run. I'm going to dump it and move on. Now, I may not dump it because I got a tiny bit of money in there. I got a tiny bit of money. Between all, between Sheba and Doge, I probably got about four grand. Right? I got about four grand in those two little meme coins. And they're doing great. I'm in, the, I'm in the green. I was in the red for like two years. But I bought in 22, dirt cheap. Of course, it got its bounce going right now, so I'm in the green. But I'm thinking, okay, well, let's just ride this thing and, and see where it goes. You know, if it if it if it won a rug pull, if I if I miss time the rug pull, 
then I just keep it, right? I keep it for 10 more years and see, because there'll be a couple more rug pulls in the next 10 years, right? They're going to pull the rug, they're going to rug pull y'all uh, in 25. So they're going to let this thing run like, 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 a, like an out of control wildfire for 24. 25, they rug pull you. And then you'll have a couple of years where, you know, you can buy it cheap again. And then they rug pull you again. And then you'll have a couple more years where you can buy it cheap again. They rug pull you again. So they're going to be two or three more rug pulls in the next 10 years. So if you miss this rug pull, there's another rug pull coming in a few more years because this is how this, this, is how this investment works. It, it don't have no underlying value. So it has to be rug pulls. It has to be a pump and dump because that's the only way you get the value up. You do understand it because there's no operating company. There's no, no, no profitability mechanism. See, with, with the stock market, at least, you got companies like NVIDIA who, who, who just continue to exceed expectations from, from a revenue standpoint and, and a profitability standpoint. That drives the stock price up. See, see, these people in the container store I just talked about, their revenue is probably not being driven up. They're probably not profitable. So therefore, their stock price suffers. Now, if they figure out a way to get profitable again, their stock price will go up. See, you don't have that in crypto. You don't have that in crypto because there's no operating company. There's no underlying company. There's nothing to go up other than Jim might buy it for more than I bought it for. That's, that's it. There is no company. There's nothing I can point to and say, hey, their fourth quarter earnings were tremendous. There ain't no earnings. <laughs> ain't no company. It's just a piece of digital stuff on the screen. That's all. It, see, so, so there is no value there. There's no, there's no ongoing value other than what some sucker is willing to pay more than what you paid for. It. That's the value. That's the, that's the value proposition. There is no quarterly earnings because it don't have no company. It don't make no products. It don't make no services. Right? Well, you, well, you, so you gotta, you actually gotta compare it to gold because it's kind of like gold. No, it's not. I don't think it's like gold. It's not like gold. With gold, you get a you you can have a physical precious metal, a physical precious metal. Well, Bitcoin, what's physical? Nothing. It's a bunch of code. It's a bunch of numbers. It's nothing. So all I'm telling you is, is if, if you're in the in the in the in the crypto space and you're trying to make money. You probably missed the money making part because you should have bought in 2022 if you really wanted to make money. Now, right now, you're in the rug pull part, right? You're, you're, in, the, you're, in, the, you're, you're in the pump phase right now. You're in the pump phase. See, 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 the dump phase was 22. Now you're in the pump phase. So if you're buying in the pump phase, you're going to lose money unless you get out of this thing. That's my opinion. You can keep it till the cows come home if you want to, right? You can keep it till the cows come home. But I'm telling you where you're at in this process with crypto, specifically Bitcoin and Ethereum, because those are the two big ones, right? Bitcoin and Ethereum. Right now, you're in the pump phase. Oh, it's going to the moon. It's going to be $150,000 a coin. It's going to be $200,000 a coin. See, that's the pump phase. They call that the pump phase, the hype phase. Let's hype them up. You ever been to like a little rap concert? Where before the real main headliner come out, you 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 got the hype guy, the hype guy come out first to get you pumped, get you ready to go. See, Jay Z don't just walk out there on the stage. That ain't how it work. Jay Z don't just okay. I'm going to Jay Z concert. Uh, it's Nine o'clock. Jay Z's coming out. Nope. Jay Z ain't coming out till like midnight. You're gonna have several hype guys in front of Jay Z to get you hyped, get you ready. So when Jay Z get out there. You, you, you good to go, you hype, you ready to go That's what they're doing with y'all with this crypto thing See, they pumping you They hyping you Buy now, get in now It's going to $150,000 a coin $66,000 a coin Is a bargain, jump in Jump in, see they hyping you They hyping you And then all of a sudden it's going to fall off a cliff Overnight It ain't going to be no two months falling off the cliff It's going to be like overnight it's going to be like overnight, it's just going to fall off the cliff. And then people are going to be like, oh my goodness, I paid $66,000 a coin. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Well, Richard, I'm not paying $66,000 a coin. I'm buying a fractional share. I'm in BlackRock's ETF. I'm protected. No, you're not. No, you're not. 
No, you're not. You're not protected. I don't care how much money you put in, you're still buying a fractional share of a coin that costs $66,000 a coin. So you're, you're in the same place as somebody that bought a whole share. <laughs> I mean, you just bought a little teeny weedy piece of it. That's all. But you're in the same spot. It ain't like, oh, since I bought that, I bought a fractional share, really. I, no, you're still at a $66,000 per coin price. What, what, what would this thing get up to? I don't know. It depends on how big they want to pump. And who, 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 can, who, who controls the pump? The 1%. I keep telling y'all, the 1% control the pump. I like to call them crypto wells because they own most of the crypto, right? I like to call them the crypto wells. That's just the 1%. So they're they pumping right now. The dump's coming, though. It may be later this year. It may be 25, but it's coming. Why? How do you know it's coming? History. I just follow history, man. I told y'all. I'm just, I'm a guy that just goes on to Google and I'm, I, I know enough about Google to be dangerous. That's it. I know enough about Google to be dangerous. And, 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 and the history of this thing since 2009, it ain't good, guys. I'm telling you, it ain't good. So for all you guys that are brand new and got caught up in the, in the pump, be careful. See, me, I'm going to hang my hat on what I told y'all. Them three big boy assets, all historical track record. All historical track records. Positive. S&P 500, 100 years, 7 to 10% rate of return. Come on, man. What do you got on crypto? Other, you know, all you got on crypto that I can find is pump and dump. That's it. I can't find nothing else. I don't see no utility use for it, even though everybody keep talking about the, the blockchain. Everybody keep talking about the blockchain. Every time I say something about crypto, people talk about the blockchain, but I haven't. I've not found one area of my everyday life that anybody uses the blockchain. I can't find one area of my day-to-day -day life where anybody uses crypto to buy anything. I'm just, that's just me. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a caveman and I'm, 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 I'm in a whole nother planet somewhere, but everywhere I go, I don't see nobody playing with crypto. I don't see nobody talking about the blockchain. None of my neighbors talk about the blockchain and most of these people are rich. I ain't never heard none of them talk about the blockchain. I ain't never none, heard none of them say, oh yeah, I went and bought my Aston Martin uh, with Bitcoin. I ain't never heard nobody say that. I'm just saying, guys, this is just bull crap. This whole utilitarian purposes, it's going to be, it's going to replace the dollar. It's going to be better than gold. <laughs> man, come on, man. You know how long gold been around, man? <laughs> gold been around for a long time, man. You, you're talking about like 10,000 years. Gold been around. Gold been, been traded and used way back in, I'm t you're talking about like ancient Egypt, bro. Like 3,000 B.C., 5,000 B.C. I mean, come on, bro. 7,000 B.C. Gold been around. It's a medium of exchange. Crypto been around how long? 2009? <laughs> and you talking about it's on the same thing as gold. I mean, y'all people are just... Some of y'all got to stop this, man. It's not on the same level as gold. Gold's been around for 10,000 years. Crypto been around for 14 years. And in that 14 years, it did what? Burned a lot of 99 percenters. 99 percenters have lost billions and billions and billions of dollars. I don't know many 99 percenters that have lost billions of dollars in gold. I don't know. But I know they have in crypto. Go do your research. Billions of dollars. Billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars they've lost in crypto. Crypto exchanges, crooked. Crypto lenders, crooked. Guess what? You put your little crypto on their little platform, get, get what they do with it. <laughs> they take your crypto and go lend it out to somebody else or give it to somebody else. I mean, it's just ridiculous, man. But this is, this is the wild, wild west. See, this is the wild, wild west. I love it because it's deregulated. It's decentralized. Nobody controls it. That's your problem right there. Somebody need to control it. But see, 
they got y'all brainwashed in the matrix here. They don't want it deregulated. They don't want it regulated. They don't want it. They don't want big brother. The matrix, they want y'all in the matrix, continuing to buy this stuff that has no value. The biggest Ponzi scheme in the history of Ponzi schemes. It has no value. But yet and still, you think it does. And people right now running it up on the pump, buying it at $66,000 a coin, thinking it's going to go to $150,000 a coin, which is not. It's not. It's not. If it would have done that, it would have done that now. And yeah, and yeah, somebody just mentioned the fixed supply thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the original plan. The original plan was to only have 21 million Bitcoin. But now I'm hearing they're going to create some more. We're going to have it, whatever the hell that means. That's just a fancy way to say they're going to they gonna double the amount of it, basically. <laughs> That's basically what it means, right? That's basically what they're doing. But, 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 but originally, it was never supposed to be more than that. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to create some ways to make more of it. <laughs> Y'all better learn, man. These folks, man, I'm telling you, these one percenters, these one percenters good, man. They, they got you. Oh, yeah, we're going to make it more affordable. We're going to put it in an ETF. It's more affordable. You know, you guys do know, right, since BlackRock has started introducing this thing, those of people have gotten in $3.8 trillion. <laughs> Boy, this is too much. $3.8 trillion for cryptocurrency, for Bitcoin, in their ETF. Wow, that's amazing to me. Now, what's going to happen on the dump? Guess what's going to happen to that $3.8 trillion? On the dump. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen on the dump? That going to be cut in half. Or even less. Right? Because it's going to tumble back down to about 17,000 a coin. Something like that. Maybe 20,000 a coin. So that little, that little 3.8 trillion going to be cut. And it's going to be cut by, what, 60? It's going to be cut by more than half. Like 60, 70%. On the dump. And the dump's coming. So those of y'all that you got your money in BlackRock and that ETF with that $3.8 trillion, I'm telling you, man, be careful. Hopefully you ain't put your life savings in there. I hope not. You don't put your life savings in something that has no value, that has no underlying value, that has no value proposition other than what the next guy is willing to pay for it. That's the value proposition. No operating company. No widgets, no services, no earnings report, nothing you can physically touch. <laughs> Just hope and a prayer. Just three card Monty. Find out where the, uh, the ball is. You know, it's just nuts, man, to me that people invest this type of money in something that you can't even, you got no tangible, no utilitarian purpose for it. I don't understand that. So guys, please be careful. Hey, invest in what you want to invest in. It's your money. You do whatever you want to do. But guys, I would be careful. I really would be careful. This is a, this is a slippery slope a lot of you guys are on right now. You're on a slippery slope. Just, just stop and, and really rationally think about this. What did I really just buy? What did I really just buy? How can I really evaluate the success of this thing? Now, if you go look at history, history is not very good for cryptocurrency. It's not very good. The history since 2009, guys, is not good. It is littered with people who have lost billions of dollars, life savings. Why? Because it's not regulated. All right? It's not regulated. So anybody in Everybody can create a coin. Anybody and everybody can, can, can mislead you and, 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 and it's untraceable because once you send it, it's gone. 
that there, you can't, oh, it's on the blockchain. Nobody don't use the blockchain, though. Nobody don't understand the blockchain. So who cares if it's on the blockchain? Nobody understand it. It's anonymous. So you do what you got to do, but that's my daily dose of crypto. I think it's crazy. I think it's a three-card Monty. I think it's a Ponzi scheme. And um, I, 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 I feel for the people who in the past have lost their life savings in this investment. And I, I fear uh, more will lose money. More will lose money. Because it's greed. See, the 1% ain't going to never be satisfied until they... They're just never going to be satisfied, guys. They're not going to be satisfied with just taking a little bit from you. The only way they satisfy themselves is if they take everything from you. They got to take everything from you. See, they, they want you in a state where you think you own everything, but you really own nothing. That's where they want you. That's where they want you. They want you in a state where you think you own everything, but you really own nothing. And that's sad. If that's the state you want to be in. Personally, I'm not going to be in that state. I'm going to be over here as an investor where I'm buying real assets that create real wealth. I'm not going to be over here buying some Ponzi scheme that has no underlying value, um, can get rug pulled at any time. Um, I got nothing physical to hold on to. Um, there is no annual reports. There is no quarterly reports. There are no, no utilitarian purpose for it. It's not going to replace the gold. It's not going to replace the dollar. No one uses the blockchain. No one pays with cryptocurrency. And it's been around for 14 years, 15 years. I know y'all tell me when, when are we going to get all of this stuff to be going? When are we going to get crypto doing everything y'all say it's supposed to do? When am I going to be able to go to my grocery store and say, okay, here's my credit card or here's my crypto card. Boop, 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 pay my groceries and get out of there. When am I going to do that? When that's going to happen? When that technology coming out? When that, when that technology coming out? When am I going to be able to go on the blockchain and pay my insurance premium? When am I going to blockchain and, 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 and pay my, my, my cell phone bill? When can I go on the blockchain and do anything. I've never heard one person do anything on the blockchain. When am I going to do all of that? Or is it just going to continue to be a fantasy world where we say all this stuff going to happen, but it never happened? And it just continues to be a pump and dump. It's just going to, be, it's going to continue to be a pump and dump? Somebody please tell me. Help me out here. Help me out. Help me understand when does all of this stuff happen? You've been saying this since 2009 when the, when the first white paper came out for, for Bitcoin. It's going to take over the dollar. The dollar is going to be non-existent. It's never going to exist anymore. <laughs> I get a kick out of when people say the dollar is good. The dollar is going to zero. It's, it's, it's already, it's, it's nothing. The dollar means nothing anymore. But yet and still, you still get a direct deposit in dollars. You still pay your, your bills in dollars. You still go buy your groceries in dollars. You still pay your credit card bill in dollars. You still go buy your cars in dollars. Everything you do still in dollars, but it's, but it's, but it's nothing. It's, it's, it's worthless. <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all got to stop this, man. I know y'all heavily invested in crypto, some of y'all. Y'all can't let it go. I know. I know. I know the 1% got you in the matrix, and, and it's hard to get out of the matrix. I know, guys. I know it's hard. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you get out of this matrix because I know some of you crypto guys, y'all can't help it. Y'all have dr drank the Kool-Aid. Y'all ain't going to let it go. Y'all ain't going to let it go. Y'all ain't going to let it go. So that's okay. Don't let it go. Hang on to it. Hang on to the blockchain. <laughs> Although I've never heard nobody even use the blockchain, but hang on to the blockchain. It's coming. Maybe it will happen in, 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 in 23, 23, 300 years from now, well, 23, 24, 300 years from now, maybe it'll happen. <laughs> Probably none of us will be here. So maybe it'll happen in the next 300 years. The blockchain will have some transactions on it. Maybe in the next 300 years, we'll be able to go to the grocery store and buy our groceries with 
cryptocurrency, maybe in 300 years, everything we do will be done through cryptocurrency. Because that's what y'all been saying since 2009. None of that's happened yet, but I know it's only been 15 years. But help me out here. Oh, it's going to replace gold. Mm, gold's been around 10,000 years. I don't think it's going to replace gold. It's going to replace the dollar. Uh, the only way the dollar gets replaced is somebody come in here and, and take America over. That's the only way the dollar going to get replaced. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Not in our lifetime, at least. So it's not going to replace the dollar. It's not going to replace anything. Just admit it's just the pump and dump. Just admit I'm in this thing to sell it to some other sucker who will pay me more than what I paid. Just admit that. If you guys would just admit that, it would be a lot better. But I get why you don't admit it, because nobody won't buy it. <laughs> you admit that. So you can't admit it, but you know that's the truth. The truth is get in and maybe some sucker will pay you more or pay more for it than you paid and you get out. Classic pump and dump. Classic Ponzi scheme, right? Y'all know that. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Come on now. Come on. I know you don't want to agree with me, some of you crypto guys. I know. But be honest. Be honest. Over the last 15 years, it doesn't have a good track record. You got to at least admit to that, right? You guys got to at least admit to that. You got to at least admit to, over the last 15 years, the track record is shady. It's shady. It's very shady. You don't want me to go, you, you don't want me to pull, pull up the phone due to, my, to my, my research lab. I can go to my research lab. I can go to my fact checking research lab if you want me to. I can, don't, don't make me turn on this phone and go to my research lab. I can go to the research lab, I got all day. I told y'all I got all day, I'm retired. I got all day. I can cut this thing short or I can go to the research lab. Don't make me go to the research lab because I can. You don't want me to go to the research lab, crypto guys. I can go there for you if you want me to now. I go to the research lab, pull up all the ugly. I can, I can, pull, up, I can pull up the ugly. All right. Okay, I'll let y'all get out of here. I don't, don't make me go to the research lab and pull up the ugly on y'all. And, 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 and Oh, okay. Y'all to make me go to the lab. Let me go to the lab real quick. Let me go to the lab. Let me go to the lab. Since y'all won't let it go, some of y'all in the chat won't let it go. Some of y'all really, really, really strong Bitcoin and crypto supporters. I'm going to have to go to the lab. Let me go to the lab. Let me go to my research lab. Real quick here. Let me pull up some of these. Let me pull up some of these scams. That's happened here on the lab. I'm going to go right here in the lab if I can find it. Google. Here we go. Let me go here in the lab. Let's see here. Crypto. Crypto. Company. Bankruptcies. There we go. Crypto company bankruptcies. Here we go. Let me just go ahead and it says uh, bankruptcy. Here we go. The bankruptcy filing in particular have underscored how intertwined many of the industry players were. Investors flocked from crypto to safety asset classes in response to the Federal Reserve's continued rate increase. There are several continuing bankruptcy proceedings from 2022. Have you ever heard of FTX? BlockFi, Celsius, Voyager. 
Do those names ring a bell? They all are crypto lenders or crypto exchanges that filed bankruptcy in 2022. Anybody ever heard of those guys? Okay. How many crypto companies have failed? How many cryptocurrencies have failed according to coin kickoff from 2013 to 2022? There were 2,383 crypto coin failures. Hmm. Do I need to keep going through the lab? Do I need to keep going to the lab? Or can I turn, you want me to get out of the lab or do you want me to keep, keep digging? I keep digging now. I keep digging. I'm retired. I'm retired. I can keep digging. I can keep digging. I can keep digging, guys. It's up to you. Which crypto company is in trouble? Oh, yeah, all of them already failed, filed, filed bankruptcy. So they're they, they not in trouble anymore. They're they, they in bankruptcy. <laughs> Ain't no trouble for them. They, they in bankruptcy. They basically stole billions of dollars from people uh, and now are in bankruptcy. Let's see who are the latest company. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What, what is it called? Binance. Let's see how much Binance had to pay. Binance. Lawsuit. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see how much. Is there a lawsuit against Binance? SEC's lawsuit against Binance is one of a slew of cases the regulator has brought against crypto firms in recent years. Why is Binance in trouble? Our team of investigators uncovered that Binance disregarded anti-money laundering, know your customer laws, failed to register as a money transmitter, and willfully violated U.S. sanctions tied to the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. Hmm. Money laundering. My goodness, guys. You mean to tell me one of y'all's top crypto companies is tied to money laundering? I wonder why. No regulations. Oh, yeah. What type of fine did they pay? Let's see what fine they paid. Let's see here. Finance. Let's see if we can find out what the fine was. I think it was what? Here we go. Binance Holdings Limited, the entity that operates the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. Binance.com pleaded guilty today and has agreed to pay over $4 billion to resolve the Justice Department's investigation into related to the Bank Secrecy Act. Failure to register as a money transmitting business and the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. Binance founder and chief executive CEO, whatever his name is, a Canadian national also pleaded guilty to failing to maintain an effective anti-money laundering program. Come on, guys. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. You're talking about the largest, the largest cryptocurrency exchange. Many of you guys got your cryptocurrency on this exchange. The largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world just got hit with a $4 billion fine. Money laundering, guys. Do you guys know what money laundering is and how bad that is? Do you know how bad money laundering is? Isn't that bad to have that associated with your asset? Cryptocurrency. It's associated with cryptocurrency. Money laundering. The bad guys. Protecting the bad guys' money. 
Not good. Not good. So all I'm telling you guys is if you want to hang your hat on that type of investment, go right ahead. I'd rather put my money in Apple. I'll put my money in Apple. I'll put my money in SPLG. I'll go ahead and put my money in S um, FTEX. Go ahead and continue putting my money in the Magnificent 7. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pass on crypto, given its shady background. Given that the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world just had to pay $4 billion because they violated money, laund money laundering programs, guidelines, laws, whatever you want to call it. I've already told you how many of them went bankrupt in 22, about five of them. Stole billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars from good, hardworking folk like you and I. Never to get it back. They never get it back, guys. It's gone. A couple of them cats even went to jail. It was so bad. It's just ridiculous, man. So please be careful as you ride this wave of pump. Just know the dump is coming. And hopefully you don't be on the, the dump side. I hope not. I hope you get in this thing, make you some money, and get out. Because the dump coming, man. I just gave y'all all the dirt you needed. I mean, if you're willing to invest in a, 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 a currency or an investment like that, given the fact that all this stuff I just read to y'all just in these five little minutes I was on here, I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know what to tell you. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Lock it in with a thumbs up if you don't mind before you get yourself out of here, if you appreciate the content. I know I had a lot of crypto guys in here that are losing their mind right now and are not happy with me, but that's okay. It's just my opinion, guys. Don't take it to heart. Hey, if you want to invest in crypto, knock yourself out. I, I really don't care. I already told you what I'm doing on my wealth transfer blueprint. I, I got my three big boy investments. I ain't got to worry about no money, money laundering uh, allegations on Apple. I ain't got to worry about no money laundering allegations on NVIDIA. I ain't got to worry about no money laundering allegations on SPLG. I ain't got to worry about no money laundering uh, allegations on FT. E C. I ain't got to worry about none of that, right? Historical track record of multiplying money, billions and trillions of dollars of multiplying money, not losing billions of dollars of money. It's a difference. One is making billions. One is losing people billions. You choose the investment you want to be in, but that's on you. It's your financial freedom. You do what you feel like you need to do, and I'm going to respect that. But again, I'm giving you my opinion, and I hope you appreciate that opinion. And if you disagree with it, that's okay. It's okay for us to disagree, guys. No hard feelings. I don't have any. I'm going to be here tomorrow with some more content. I'm going to be back this afternoon with a little bit more content. So if you're rocking with me, lock it in with a thumbs up. I really appreciate y'all stopping by. Please pay attention to what's going on with the Fed over these next couple of days. Like I said, they're meeting with Congress. Uh, Congress does have oversight over the Federal Reserve. So they're meeting with Congress. They're talking about some things that... Um, really uh, in our best interest to understand. So if you didn't catch that part of the video, go back and take a look at that. That's in the front half of the video. We talked a little bit about stocks. No better time than right now to get plugged in, get yourself invested. And if you don't have a brokerage app, you can rock with me and use the brokerage app I use, which is Moomoo. That link is down in the description box. Go click on that Moomoo link. When you put $100 in your Moomoo account, they're going to give you five free stocks. When you put a thousand dollars in your Moomoo account, they're going to give you 15 free stocks for just trying out the brokerage app. Then you're in a position to start buying paper assets to build wealth, not lose wealth, but build wealth, not get wealth stolen from you, but build wealth. And if you want to copy my plan, my wealth transfer blueprint plan, if you want to copy that, all you got to do is send me an email. Richard, I want to copy your wealth transfer blueprint. I've opened my Moomoo account. I've deposited money into my Moomoo account. I'm ready to start buying paper assets. And then boom, I'm going to send you that video that outlines in detail those three big boy blue chip paper assets that actually multiply money. That actually has a history of multiplying money. Not a history of taking money from you, but multiplying it. Send me, send me an email and let me know you want that and I'll email it to you. My email address is down in the description box. 
For those of you that want to follow me on Instagram, I do post on Instagram occasionally. My Instagram handle is Richard Fain Millionaire Mentor. All I have to be to warn you now, it's a lot of fake impersonators over there. So be careful. Remember, I will never ask you to send me money to invest for you. So if you do follow me on Instagram or you think you followed me and some, some slickster, some scammer slides into your DM and says they're me and they start asking you for money, you know they're lying. You know they're a scammer. So just be careful. Richard Fain, Millionaire Mentor. Everything is spelled correctly. No missing L's, no missing E in millionaire, no, no, no three L's in millionaire, none of that crap. It's all spelled correctly. If you want to follow me there, please feel free to. I do post reels on there maybe once or twice a week, just giving you guys encouragement and giving you golden nuggets to build wealth. So if you want to follow me there, more than welcome to follow me there. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe. I'm here every day, man. I'm here every day giving out information to those that want information, those that want to build wealth. Everybody ain't going to receive it, but that's okay. I concentrate on the ones that do want to receive it. I'm okay with that, right? So if you want to subscribe, subscribe. Again, if you want the Moo Moo offer, you got to click on that link down in the description box to get that Moo Moo offer. Like I said, $100 in your account, five free stocks, $1,000 in your account, 15 free stocks, and then you're rocking with me because that's the brokerage app I'm using to double my net worth over the next 10 years. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy, get wealthy, and I'm gonna catch you guys on the next video. Peace.